to Pat. Pat, it's your show, buddy. We're all waiting for iPhone hacking. Thank you. Thank you, Clement. Can you hear me OK? Yes, clean. OK, perfect. All right, good afternoon, guys. And, and thank you, Clement and the team for a fantastic uh, demonstration and setting me up for uh, for the next session. So in the next 30 minutes, I'd like to uh, basically take you guys through uh, you know, more uh, specific uh, stories and awareness around mobile security. Uh, and then, uh, you know, finishing off the the the, uh, the presentation with a demonstration on the iOS device, right? But I think from what you have heard so far today uh, from Clement and from, you know, all the common knowledge you hear on the news day to day, um, you know, uh, the, the reality is that nothing is really secure and our mobile devices, such a valuable device that sits in our pocket or on our, on our hands, are actually becoming a, a, a mechanism, an entry point for people to get to you. Right. So uh, I will probably start with the, 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 you know, the conversation around how secure is your mobile devices, because uh, I know a lot of you are IT. A lot of you guys are not so IT savvy, but I think this is actually a personal device, right? We all hold it dearly, has very important information about ourselves, family, personal information. But, uh, you know, what are you doing to protect those information that you have? So um, here is actually a map. So I know some of the audience uh, and, and most of the organization uh, uh, that that uh, that organized the event is based out of uh, uh, KO. So this is actually a, a heat map, right? Collected from our solution uh, that we actually detected attack and uh, you know events that's detected by our user uh, within the Malaysian geographic area, right? So I actually have this map uh, for you know all around the world, and we can share that if, if there's of interest, you know, towards the end at the Q and A session. But the idea is that your device is actually not so secure because you cannot see. So, you know, a couple of, couple of things to talk about, right? How, um, you know, what's the version of the phone, uh, iPhone or Android software that you're running? Uh, are they up to date? And guys, why, why is it important? Because every update that was introduced by either Google or Apple, not really focusing around, you know, features, unless they're major releases. But all the patch releases are all about security updates and, and fixes that will help protect your device. And I know out of the, the data point that we have, roughly around 20% of the population today are not running the latest version, even when they can, right? So that is actually a, a big gap. So now, uh, malware, we, we saw some example from Clement and from the, from the person, uh, from the team around, you know, attacks through malware. And very importantly, right, malware is what people think about security. But, you know, advanced attacker are actually moving away from that. But the reality is 30% of the malware today actually is mobile and that number is actually going to increase. Apart from the malware, we also seeing network related attack, right? So if this was a, a live event that I typically do with Clement and, and, the, and the team, uh, we actually will have a little pineapple devices that will be sniffing around users uh, Wi-Fi SSID. And you'll be very surprised to see that your phone is actually connected to one of those uh, spoofed Wi-Fi. Without you even saying anything, this happens you know, without you knowing. So network attack is actually the easiest way and to, to resonate with uh, what Clement's saying, right? You don't actually have to do anything. You don't have to download anything. Just by having the phone on next to you, the attacker can actually get you to connect to the device. Now, moving on, I think we've, we've heard about phishing and phishing has been a, a big problem, regardless whether it's mobile or desktop. And more importantly, do not think that uh, attack can only come through application, right? We have seen examples and I'll share with you a photograph that you receive on your phone, uh, a website that you're browsing, uh, what type of messages that you get can actually all contribute to uh, compromises and control of the device, even a, a charger, right? So something that is important for you guys to know. So let me introduce these seven uh, characters uh, that they, they, we call them mobile monsters, uh, just to make it simpler for people to understand, right? Uh, we actually uh, can categorize these bad guys into four different areas, yeah? On the top left, you have the network guys, they actually, uh, you know, a family business, they work together hand in hand to try to compromise and take advantage of the network connection that your mobile phone is leveraging. Perhaps when you're not in the office, not you know, at home, perhaps when you're outside. Phishing attack, they're everywhere, right? They're actually no longer coming from the email so much anymore. We still get a lot of that, but people are now sending WhatsApp messages uh, and, you know, Facebook messengers and all these social media SMSs to actually try to get to you a lot easier. Applications, we talk about it a little bit. We'll go into a bit more. And then on the right hand side, 
is these are all the ways that attacker would try to get onto your phone, but like uh, many of the attacker part of that cyber queue chain, you want to be able to be stay persistent and continue to be able to spy on people or take information, right? Or use the mobile devices as a pivot to into the other you know, parts of the organization. So this is the, the kind of things that we see that operating system will actually need to be, uh, has vulnerability that can also be advantage. So let me take you through to some stories, right? So that's the number one uh, favorite topic of um, between me and Clement and I think a lot of you guys, which operating system do you think is uh, more secure, guys? I know a lot of people are saying iPhone, iPhone, iPhone. I know Clement loves his uh, Samsung iOS device, but Pokemon Go, you know, not, not so good, right? You actually need more protection. But uh, let me show you with data, right? So this is actually the number of uh, critical common vulnerability, or, or you can call it bugs, that is discovered on the Apple iOS channel uh, and the Android operating system, right? So every time you get those updates, right, that pushes out to your phone, you need to do update uh, because of these problems that the companies are fixing them to keep you secure. So you look at the trend line, right? If anyone who can read graph, all you need to look at is this line going, uh, the red line over years are going up for the iOS platform. And uh, relatively looking at the Android, if I just minimize this so you can see better, the line's actually flattening, uh, if not actually on the way down, right? So this is actually quite interesting and quite telling because think about this, right? If you are the attacker and if you think it's easier to attack or target certain platform because the perception is that it's secure, uh, then you know you'll be easier to get in, right? So now we are finding more and more people are spending time and researching on the iOS platform. And let me give you a, a real example, right? Why is that? Why is that the case? Because for me, as a, as a hacker, I'm wearing black and usually I, I wear a hoodie, right? But I'm not that good. So when a hacker wants to target, uh, you know, and, and create all these uh, uh, engineering examples or payloads, right, exploitations to control the device. What is easier for me is it is it to target iOS 13? Or is it for me to target Android devices? Because I have to worry about Samsung, uh, Sony, you know, all the different brands, because all the permutation and different software version makes it very difficult for me to do a, a big target, right? Whereas for Apple, if I can get a version of the operating system that's vulnerable, guess what, iPhone X all the way down, iPad, Etc. everything running the same operating system are vulnerable. So it's actually bigger bang for bucks, right? So we actually see this trend, and this is actually very interesting just for people uh, to, to, to be aware of. Now, moving along, I uh, just want to make sure we don't spend too much time on the slides and we can do a demo. Uh, I wanted to also share with you, right? Um, you know, nothing is unhackable, right? Jeff Bezos, uh, being the, the richest person in, in the world, even after the divorce, when his phone was hacked, do you guys know he was actually hacked by a 4.4 megabyte video file that was sent through his WhatsApp messages? The messages, uh, the video essentially uh, exploit the operating system, installed a spyware, exposes everything on his personal life, right? Uh, and and you know the, the the story is over. And then if you look at other examples, right? Charging station on the left hand side looks very innocent. Uh, you all try to get some free juice every now and then. There are actually a vulnerability on iPhone again last year was discovered that essentially allow any cable connection to compromise the devices because it's actually not a software bug. It's actually a physical hardware bug that's within the iPhone uh, 4S to iPhone 10, right? So, you know, believe it or not, the iPhone, Apple share price went up when this happened because most people would say, okay, well, there's no way to fix it. You have to buy a new iPhone, right? And I think that's when Clement decided I'm going to uh, Android because there's, there's enough of this, right? Okay, so let's move on. Now, I have uh, something more, even more interesting because when you're running the latest version, do you think it's secure? Because by default, you know, no one will actually be aware of there's a problem when you're running the latest version. And this, this notion of a zero day bug essentially means that even you are running the latest, greatest version, the most secure version, uh, there are still actually bugs out there and there is a market for it that can be used to actually compromise and attack devices. Right, so you can see the Jeff Jeff Bezos device is probably the latest version, iPhone 10 at the time, 2018. Uh, so, so this kind of thing can happen even to the latest version. So do not think, right, just because you're running the latest version, you're actually safe. And this is actually the price list, right? From all the way on the top, without you clicking anything on the Android device in order to compromise the device, latest version, uh, maybe that takes uh, Clemens' uh, device, you know, you'll take uh, up to 2.5 million. 
it's a little bit more, right? The Clement example actually has a malware you had to install, right? But if you actually require high technique, zero touch, zero click, there is a price to pay. But let's look further down, right? For WhatsApp messages, there's actually another price, a little bit lower, but let's not look at those. Look at something we use every day, Safari and Chrome. We browse on our phone, you know, a lot of the time. And by visiting websites, you can see here on the right-hand side, there are examples of websites that will essentially compromise and control your device. So uh, I think the important thing uh, for the session here is to understand uh, awareness out there, and, and there's actually things that you might not know about. OK, so moving uh, quickly, I wanted to go into other monsters, right? So we talked about uh, the devices, uh, you know, that can be compromised, the operating system. We now want to talk about the network. And let me give you two examples here, right? So on the left hand side in 2017, there was actually a news uh, that apparently the Russian troops are using uh, the drone that you, you see here and this little pineapple devices that essentially is used for spoofing Wi-Fi network. When you put the two together, and when you fly them into the army base where the soldiers actually have their personal mobile phone in their pocket or at the army base, they automatically start connecting to this device. And the next thing you know is that all these websites that they're visiting, all the personal information, things that they're doing, and, and malware has been, been uh, you know, uh, intercepted and, and pushed down to the device, and the device and the user's device are compromised. So this happens uh, you know, in the past and happens for these kind of uh, profile people. Do you think um, it's not easy or, or you know not likely to happen for you guys? Actually, it's a lot easier as well, right? So now the other example, this is actually coming from our customer. Uh, we have a banking customers in Australia. Uh, they actually deploy our solution onto the employee's phone. And what they actually found is the employee works really hard. At night, he went home, get onto the bus. The bus offers free Wi-Fi. Guess what? When something is free, uh, when the bad guy is on the bus, you're on the bus, and when he started spoofing and uh, manipulating the Wi-Fi, the, the user's device actually detected, oh, my company Wi-Fi is live, it's on the bus. So the, the, the phone automatically switched the company SSID, even though uh, that SSID does not is not real and is not where he, the user is based on, right? But how does your phone know about where he is and where this is SSID is actually real or not? It doesn't actually have the intelligence to determine that. So essentially what happened is the user connected our solution detected that actually there's a raw Wi-Fi, disconnect the user from the Wi-Fi, and then alerted the administrator, right? So a few weeks later, this bus uh, security system was updated to prevent this type of attack, right? Again, this happens, uh, you know, in all the cities that you live in. I know with the COVID, we are all working from home, but don't be so sure your home Wi-Fi is safe. When was the last time you check who else is on your home Wi-Fi? Okay. Now, let's go into phishing and uh, some data point again. Uh, and I'll make it uh, uh, quick and uh, snappy. So we know uh, phishing is a problem because according to the Verizon uh, uh, data breach report, right, 90% of the breach actually started with a phishing attack. And if you combine this number with the number of emails, 61% of the emails are actually open on mobile devices, that makes mobile actually a very big target, right? And as I mentioned before, people are not using the traditional channel anymore. They're actually sending you stuff through social uh, and, and forwarding your information, things like uh, you know, the, the WhatsApp example there. Now, let me show you with some data, right? So Clement already shared, during this period, last three months, Google actually de determined that during a day, there's at least 18 million email spam messages or phishing email that is targeted or focused around COVID, right? So this is something very well publicly known. Uh, and we also have some example when we did our uh, research in the from our team, we found uh, we found these are the common domain names, right? Facebook, Microsoft, PayPal, uh, even the banks, right, are the target uh, uh, for for the uh, phishing website. And if you look at the domain, these are the domain that actually hosted, you know, that that website that um, that Facebook website that Clement showed you when people were cloning. They're able to host it on these countries, right? So you can see Malaysia or you know some of the Asian country are actually up here on the list as well. So so this is actually a, a prevalent problem that we need to pay attention. And last information for just for you guys know, the lifespan of a phishing website uh, from the time they they get created or you know went live until that it was taken down, there's an average of ten days. Ten days is actually a long time, right? For, uh, for for people to actually uh, do enough damage and get information about you. And don't forget, phishing is not always about um, getting information or uh, credential harvesting, right? 
phishing can also be taking you to a website where they can weaponize and detonate the attack onto your device, right? Very similar to what uh, what Clement and the team have shown you. Now, I'm going to moving uh, moving on uh, quickly. So uh, for all the iOS user out there, right? Many of you think, okay, well, I'm uh, there is no antivirus uh, application on the iPhone, so there's no virus, right? So just think about that logic again. There's no antivirus application, there's no virus. Uh, but actually, in fact, uh, application attack is one of the ways. On the iOS platform, the equivalent of malware is actually the profiles, right? These profiles are things that you could install on your phone that push down configurations and settings that allow the uh, application or be change the behavior of your device, how it communicates to the outside world, right? So some example here, right? You can actually install a profile that allow you to download application that is outside the Apple App Store without you have to jailbreak the device, right? Most people think, oh, you know, who does that? You'd be actually surprised. There's actually a lot of these uh, uh, free games and application out there through the through the App Store that doesn't require any compromises. We can go into you know more configuration and Wi-Fi. Uh, VPNs are actually a common one. We actually have seen in the last year uh, more when more people are start using VPN. And when the VPN server or, or the backend is compromised, then all your data and the traffic are also at risk, right? So not something that you could avoid, but always you know look for reputable uh, services to uh, providers. Um, the other, the last example here is I often hear, right? People say I work for a company. My company provides me an MDM solution. Uh, there's actually a, a difference between security and device management. Okay, and this example here actually is a great example of uh, how not to use the MDM because the MDM server actually was compromised, which allowed the attacker to push uh, compromised WhatsApp messages and all these app uh, that has command and control features. And because it's pushed down through an MDM profile onto the user's device, the user think, oh, this is what the company wants me to do. Yes, accept uh, and, and OK. And then the next thing you know is that all the private sensitive data are being actually uh, pushed down to the attacker server, right? This is actually a real case study. Uh, so you know, just just be aware. These are these are kind of the scenario that can happen. Lastly, I wanted to uh, finish off with uh, the the notion of malware. And as uh, as we describe this a, a lot, right? Let's not focus too much on the malware. Let's focus on this notion of a leaky application, right? Because what those application does on your phone, uh, and ask yourself this question, right? How many application on your phone today that have access to your contact, to maybe location? to microphone and maybe can record, uh, uh, turn on the camera without you even knowing and even have access to copy and paste those information that you do between application and phone numbers and personal messages, right? Bank account numbers where you transfer. Those information can actually be accessed by any application that have those permission. That becomes a very critical privacy issue, right? So again, how would you know, right? You actually need something that can really help you and provide you guidance and advisory. OK, so I'm just going to uh, finish off the the, uh, the application presentation here. I want to switch off to a, a demonstration now. Uh, and uh, as, as Clement have mentioned, uh, we're going to focus on iPhone. And I just want to set the uh, set the thing here. Uh, we're actually going to uh, show you an example of a device. And typically when, when I do this is always through the network because now we are on the COVID situation. People are locked down. It's hard to get to people. So I'm going to do a social engineering, sending an email. Uh, and then the email will essentially launch an application on the user's device, which attacks the device and then takes the control, right? But let me uh, switch to the screen and just uh, claim if you can just double check that you can see my screen and my phone, that'll be great. I'm just going to put my phone up. I can see your screen, buddy. Uh, phone is not yet. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, phone right. is yes. All great. Right. So now let me uh, just just quickly uh, walk you through what I'm going to show. So the left hand side is the attacker, right? He has a, a very cool screen. He has all the control that he can do. On the right hand side is where the, the victim's device, right? So victim is at home, happily browsing away. And uh, just for the purpose of the demonstration, this device actually has the Zimperion mobile security solution installed already, right? So if I launch the application, you can see there are some, uh, some risk being detected. I can go into the device. He actually tells me, oh, you're actually running an outdated version of the, the iOS device, okay? Uh, and, but however, your device is not compromised, it's not jailbroken, it's actually in good working order. And I just want to put a disclaimer because this will be go, will go live. Uh, the demonstration we're showing here is not a zero-day back, right? Because you saw the price there, right? I don't have $2 million to show you something. 
but what I actually want to demonstrate and the purpose of the demonstration is that when your phone is compromised or hacked, the result of what the hacker can do is the same, right? Even your the latest version, Jeff Bezos' phone, or an older version phone like this, right? But the important thing to know is that you want to know the impact of a compromise so that you actually can take some precaution and steps about protecting those information. Because for anyone who think everything is secure, uh, the issue is that if you believe on layer defense, if you only have single layer, that's probably not a very smart idea, right? Uh, and we're not taking uh, Apple as a, as, as a uh, point of, uh, you know, uh, focus here. It just happened to be the, the, the uh, device that we want to show, right? So the device is in a good order. Uh, you can see the network is good. It's connected to a home Wi-Fi, right? And you actually have a uh, you know, certain application issue because I actually have application that's not from the store. So we actually provide a quick risk assessment of the device, right? And tell you, you know, for example, if I'm going to use a, a Zoom meeting, probably a bad example here, you actually give you an indication about, oh, this actual application can actually send SMS on your behalf as email access screenshots. Uh, you might want to think about this risk before you actually go about installing them, right? But that's not the focus of the demo. So let me actually show you now. I actually received an email uh, here, okay? And the email actually has a, a link that I asked me to click. So I'm going, going to just simply launch that because that's I'm working from home. I'm responding to that. And do you guys see when the application was launched, it very quickly went back to the background, okay? So essentially, uh, this is uh, one of the example people can actually attack you through an email and invocating or trigger an attack. For you, the device looks okay, yeah? Nothing nothing seems to be wrong. But on the left-hand side, let's have a look what the attacker was able to see. You can see there's a connection now to the iPhone. If I do a help here, uh, I can see a list of command that I can run, very similar to what you saw before and what Clement can see, right? So let me do something first because uh, one of the things you probably always uh, find interesting is that when your phone, when your mobile phone is locked, okay? Uh, what, it's supposedly uh, encrypted and you can't really do anything to it, right? Let's go to the left. Let's see what I can do. So I'm going to go and uh, put my phone up first here, okay? Uh, hold on. I'll just make sure I can I can put it up properly and I can take a picture, okay? So I'm going to do take a picture using the front camera and I'm going to smile, okay? So now you can see uh, the phone is locked. Uh, oh, where's the phone? Let me bring the phone back. So it's a bit annoying. However, I can actually still control the device without the user even knowing, yeah? Okay, so now, what else can I do? I can record audio. Uh, audio usually works better in a live demonstration, so I won't actually uh, do that today, uh, but you can actually get the idea, even when the phone is locked, the, the user actually have access to the device. So what else can the, uh, the attacker do, right? Because you're curious, uh, what about all the important stuff, right? So now let's go into my email again. I actually have a, a sales report, yeah? Uh, from my boss, and uh, there's a, there's some number here. Let's do one thing here. Uh, as an attacker, right, I'm, I'm sitting very far away uh, with all these remote working. The hacker is also working remote, right? I can take a screenshot and see what this person is looking at. Did you see here? The same screen that the iPhone user is looking is actually the same screen that the attacker's computer can also see. So I can actually surveillance and, and look at what you're doing. But what about this document? Because this looks interesting, right? So why don't we go ahead and see what we can do? So I'm going to open this document on the user's device, right? So he actually has some sales number. So let me um, zoom in, okay? I have something in yellow, right? So this is something probably pretty sensitive, right? That like you're working from home on your own uh, mobile devices. I'm going to go and uh, just run a command and download the attachments. And you can see here, there's one attachment that I've downloaded and I'm able to, uh, let me just Uh, go to the documents one second uh, and uh, I can actually open up the the document that I have just downloaded uh, a sales result and I can actually open these up so you can see when the attacker controls your device the uh, the same document can actually be taken out of the device into exfiltrator to the the, the attacker server okay so it's pretty simple right as you can see just a few click and uh, let's, let's continue because there's, there's a couple of things I can do. I can do uh, dump the contacts uh, information uh, and I actually get everybody's the numbers. And I have something interesting actually because one of the things we, we often uh, do here is on our phone uh, is that we use very secure application, right? So I actually have uh, this security guru here. This is actually Clement. So Clement, can you, um, uh, let me just send you a message. We want to do this live, right? So 
uh, how's the uh, how's the session? And please send something uh, something uh, sensitive, like something you want you don't want people to see, hypothetically. Are you there, Clement? Just checking. All right, he's typing. Right, so you can see that he's typing. Now let's see what the attacker can do. Right, let's see um, what. Uh, sorry, uh, let's do uh, let's do a screenshot because we all know this works, right? But now let's have a look. Uh, I can see what the user is seeing, but what about the messages? Because it might be something important to me, so I can actually run a command. Okay, and you actually told me I have three chat session with Peter and Security Guru, so let me do WhatsApp. Uh, I'm not very good at typing today. Number three, so I can actually see everything that is being typed. What about uh, WhatsApp that's not on the screen? The, the chat session number one. Wow, OK, I can actually see the conversation between Peter and he actually goes back to 2019. I actually know some sensitive number, some project pricing with the bid, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So now uh, I want to pause here a little bit because what is actually we're showing here is actually not saying that the WhatsApp application is not secure because you can see end to end encryption is very important, right? Between the communication from one side to another, it's actually very secure. It's very difficult to intercept. But don't forget, if one end of that end to end is compromised, then nothing is actually safe, right? So I was able to get to this phone. I can get the document, the emails, uh, I can take screenshot, I can record audio, I can even dump WhatsApp messages. How many of those WhatsApp messages are on your phone that you will actually be quite, you know, quite upset if someone have access to that? And all this is actually done by getting into the device. So simply putting the analogy together, um, if your mobile phone is a house, this uh, this uh, uh, mobile phone is a house. The rooms are the applications. If the hacker gets into the house, which is the phone, then they have control of everything, right? So if I look at who I am, I'm actually a root user on the iOS device. And when you are root and this with this type of privilege, you are actually no longer uh, restricted by the operating system control, including something very very personal to you. So let's let's have a look at keychain. So keychains are, are something that iOS devices keep to secure data, right? So what about let's have a look at some passwords. So if I can type properly. I need to get a lesson from uh, Clement. So you can see here there are all these passwords that I have on the device that store in the keychain. Again, no more users don't have access to this, but being a, an attacker, you already went under the operating system. You actually have full access to this information, right? Including uh, passwords uh, for Wi-Fi. Again, these passwords are actually not uh, possible or not accessible. Usually, even when, when you are a user, you cannot get your own password. But when the attacker controls the device, you have total control. Yeah. So I'm go just going to uh, quickly uh, pause here because I'm running out of time. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, the demonstration and just quickly come back to the presentation to wrap it up. OK, so um, I actually uh, purposely didn't want to talk too much about the, the protection and the solution, but I do have some tips just for everybody here. Uh, uh, you know, basically the, the, the rule of thumb is to keep your device up to date, ensure that when you're downloading application, you know, really from the official store, do not trust and uh, say yes to everything so quickly, right? Uh, the example uh, you see before and pay attention to, you know, all the things that you, you receive on your phone. Uh, always, uh, always verify those locations. And I think the most important thing you probably realize today is that you actually need to have active protection on your mobile phone to actually give you all the visibility, right? But by the way, uh, last thing I think I I'll quickly uh, flip back, which I haven't really covered, is as part of the demonstration uh, on, my, my, on my phone, I have enabled the, uh, the detection only. There's actually no uh, protection action or blocking being enabled, okay? So you can see here, we actually detected there's a whole bunch of uh, threats. And if I go to the device, you can see that the device is considered as jailbroken and compromised because all this activity has happened in place, right? And the last thing I want to show you is that uh, if you look at the event log, you can actually see a chronological order of all the thing has happened, how the attacker got onto the device, attack the operating system, tamper with your, your configuration, make modification to the system to uh, access the information, et cetera, et cetera, right? So uh, the biggest thing that uh, you, I want you guys to take away is that how do you know if your device is secure right now? And how do you know if the device is not already compromised, right? And the really uh, answer for that is you really need to have active protection. 
Thank you. So I think uh, I'm done for the part of the session. I'll hand it back to the, the track MC. Uh, hold on, guys. Uh, I have something. Uh, Pat, so if 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 someone has uh, the Zimperium's app, it will yeah. stop this attack from happening. Is that, is that okay. correct? So, so let, no, let, let me uh, just, just be very uh, precise here, right? So uh, unfortunately, in the operating system, the way it's constructed, right? Uh, the only thing that we can do as a, as a security solution is to provide you alert and notification on the criticality of the issue, right? Stopping the attack really requires some other additional control, right? So if it's a personal device, we will actually provide recommendation here as to what you what you need to do actively, okay? Uh, if it's a company device, we integrate into maybe a device management solution. For example, for Microsoft, uh, there's an Intune solution. We can actually provide conditional access blocking. So by doing that, is that you know, when the device is compromised, when you try to open your email, you'd no longer be able to do that, right? So we actually can uh, can provide more detailed demo and explanation on how it works. But thank you, uh, Clement, for the question. It's important depending on on uh, what what you know what you have on the device. Okay, thanks, Pat. Okay, back to back to the MC.